Father, we just thank you so much. As Come on, you can do better than that. Give the Lord a hand praise. All in this place. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Can I just get somebody that can talk to me? If it had not been for the mercies of God, if it had not been for the grace of God, you would have died this year. But somebody, oh God. Ah, it, Somebody say, I'm here today because of God's grace, his unmerited favor, his undeserving favor to an undeserving people. Ah, somebody talk back to me. Oh, come on, we're here on prophetic assignment. Come on, we at Progressive Church of God in Christ. There's an anointing upon this ministry. There's an anointing upon these people of God. Somebody give God a prophetic holler and say, I'm here because of his mercy. I'm here because of his grace. Now put those sanctified, blessed hands together and give God a Shabbat praise. Come on, Shabbat him. Concerning the deliverance, concerning the healing, somebody's being healed right now. Disease, sickness, illness, corona, cancer, be dried up right now during this celebration. Somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory. He's in the house. He's in the house. He's in the house. I believe if we connect anointings, somebody going to leave saying yes to God and no to say. Come on, praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Well, you may be seated in the name of the Lord. I am saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And that with that mighty burning fire. Hallelujah. Thank God for old-fashioned grandma. Now, I need y'all to help me out, progressive, because I can sense the anointing in this place. But I'm used to having my team. I've seen the musicians playing. And choir, I got to give y'all y'all props. Y'all can hang with the best of the best. Let's give this choir a round of appreciation. I've never been a jealous person. I may have my issues, but it's never been jealousy. But how many know you got to give props for props? Progressive, you are blessed with excellence in the house. Engineer, thank you so much. I was watching the young people go forth and just how the people of God is being trained. There is a spirit of excellence that is in this place. I believe excellence honor God and inspires others. And progressive, we thank God. Come on for our chosen leaders. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. Superintendent, five-star general. Come on, Superintendent Tolliver and his lovely, classy wife. Everybody stand up. Come on, we're not worshiping them. We're appreciating them. We're celebrating the God in them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. We pray a thousand times more strength upon you. A thousand times more miracles upon you. A thousand times more supernatural turnaround. I just need somebody to agree. Somebody say, somebody say it's already done. Now clap your hands and seal it. Come on, preachers. Help me, preachers. Come on, we got some pastors. We got some preachers. Anointed ministry gifts. Ha! Huh, somebody say it's already done. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. I got to get all of these uh, preliminaries out of the way, but I thank God to be on a uh, progressive uh, campus. Uh, there is an anointing, and I don't say that lightly. Uh, I, I remember going back just as I was looking at some of the pictures uh, of the man of God and G.E. Patterson, which was one of the uh, greatest preachers of all time. Even when I listen to him today, uh, he, he, uh, he, he, he builds up that inner man. 
and makes you want to live right. And my wife was in the Air Force at that time and she would bribe me and say, why don't you ride with me to Travis? G. Patterson's going to be uh, preaching. And she would get me one of those uh, Jack in the Box uh, it was like a little special burger there and I said oh man if G.E. Patterson I'd grab the little baby on in there and I'd stay on the dorms and I mean that man because it wasn't that many African American preachers and when he would preach something uh, would happen and when I seen that picture of G.E. Patterson uh, and I seen uh, this man of God listen you have somebody special in this but let's give him and his lovely wife a round of appreciation You say, man of God, why do you keep saying that? Because oftentimes, and as I've been pastoring, and if you look at any of my social network, I will never, I will never, you can't find no evidence of me ever attacking a man or woman of God. Because I've discovered that we're all on the same team. Uh, the witches are coming together. The gangsters are coming together. The terrorists are coming together. How many know that we need each other in the body of Christ? And I, I thank God again for progressive uh, being that example and then when I seen Dr. Uh, Oliver uh, who was over C.H. Mason many years ago and Dr. Thomas let me speak and uh, Bishop Hamilton was here and uh, Macklin and that was such an honor let me say this it's an honor to be able to speak on this platform I do not take it lightly and then out of all these great preachers I see in the audience we got some great preachers that know homiletics and hermeneutics but I thank God for this opportunity and and, and blessing and um, I seen coach Jones and I'm gonna get to the text I'm gonna get to the text uh, I seen coach Jones and uh, he was coach at Cordova uh, a professional man and and uh, he was trying to help me because I had potential uh, to get a scholarship and our governor, the governor teacher at Cordova was Mr. Savorn, and so they took me out with the scout of uh, Reggie Theus, and uh, Kevin uh, Smith was a, a rookie at that time. And so, you know, sometimes when you, you, you're on the wrong track, you don't care, you know, who you're around. And Coach Jones, I want to say this, I mean, he was such a professional that helped me get out of trouble. I didn't even graduate in 1988, and I told the people, I said, listen, no, I want my, I want my high school diploma. And I had favors, so I went to uh, uh, adult school. And one thing about adult school is they're more mature than you are when you're a youngster. But if it had not been for that uh, coach, he saved me out of a lot of trouble. So I just want to thank God for uh, Coach Jones. I know he's not here, but he's part of this ministry, and he's always talking about Dr. Tolliver. Can we say amen? And you say, why are you sharing that? Well, Dr. Kathy, at that time, I was so broken. I was so hurt. I have been raised in the church, uh, you know, but I didn't have a relationship. But there came a time in my life in 19, April 21st, 1988, I'll never forget. Uh, I got saved in Rancho Cordova under Dad Reynolds and, and Progressive was still at Burnett Way. I didn't know nothing about Burnett Way and my grandmother, you know those old timers, they loved church. They lived in church. So they had church and then they would sneak over in the evening. And I'm in that burn that way. I, I, I got, I'm saying this because I had no idea that I was going to be saved one day. Certainly had no idea I would be pastoring uh, that same church that Progressive came out of. Matter of fact, we just paid that mortgage off. Somebody give God praise. Come on. Ah, I wish I had some celebrators in here. Oh, come on. During the pandemic. But I was on welfare, I was on food stamps, but the pastor said, you're not always going to be broke, you're not always going to be bound, you're not always going to be in the background. If you put God first, God is going to do something great. Somebody needs to hear that in the choir, somebody needs to hear that. You may not got no money right now, but God is not finished with you yet. But make a vow to God when God blesses you, you will always honor the house of God in the name of the Lord. All right, so I, I'm getting right to the word, but I want to say this because there was a time I couldn't give at all. And this is not for show. This is, I made a vow to God. I said, Lord, if I ever be able to give, I'm going to give. This is a thousand dollar seed. Come on. I wish I had somebody that would celebrate. Talk is cheap. If you love the man of God, come on. You'll celebrate both of them. All right, let's go to our foundation scripture, St. John chapter 15. 
St. John chapter 15. I remember when I could only give a dollar. And, you know, they look at you funny if you didn't have no money. I said, Lord, please put me in a position where I can give. And if you ever put me in a position I can give, I never look at folks like these folk look at me. I ain't talking about here, but you know how, you know, you know how it could be. All right, uh, St. <laughs> John uh, chapter 15, verse number 16 is our foundation scripture. And then we're going to dive right into the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you in advance for the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's already here. We thank you for the fragrance of God that we already sense. Yokes have already been destroyed. We thank you for miracles that are being released right now upon enterprises and upon businesses. And even those that are listening, even through live streaming, God, work a miracle right now. You are a miracle worker in God. Miracles don't happen to those that need them, but miracles happen to those that expect them. And God, we expect a breakthrough. We expect a miracle. Expectation is the breeding grounds for miracles. Somebody open up your mouth and say, a miracle's headed to my household right now. Oh, come on. Talk back to me, dearly beloved. Say, a miracle is headed to my household right now. Father, anoint this lips of clay. Hide us behind your glorious cross. Help us to speak the simplicity of the gospel that even a child can understand what we're saying. And after it's said and done, we're going to give you all the credit. We're going to give you all the glory. We're going to give you all the honor in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord reads, St. John chapter 15, verse number 16. And then we're going to go over to Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse number 11. Listen to what the word of the Lord says. It says, you have not shown and missionary Anderson th that hat. My God, her, she can wear them hats. I was looking at her hat and Dr. Katz hat. Man, them women can wear some hats in the, ch come on. Some folks just, I told them, don't buy my wife no hat. She just can't wear it like that. We got to make her sit down and be dignified. But some folk can wear. And mama, you got a sweet spirit. I met the late um, G. Patterson's wife, and I was afraid to approach her because, you know, sometimes people are so bougie and stuck up. And I'm like, oh, God. And God's like, I never met her, though. Holy Ghost said, go to the, she was driving, and her, she had a driver in there. And I went and I introduced who I was, and she was so sweet. I was shocked. Sweet, just like mama is. How many know that when you're really saved and sanctified? There's a Galatians 5 and 22 that flows. All right, verse number 16, it says, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. That, listen to this, Whosoever uh, shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it. To you, And then Jeremiah 29 and 11, it says, for, I, I, for the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, they're plans for good and not for evil or disaster, but to give you a future and a hope. The King James Version says, and expect it in. I want everybody before you take your seat, I, I want you to work your imagination. There's some dreamers in here. There's some visionaries in here. The devil messed up letting you come through the storm. Wind is blowing. Something good is going to happen in your life. I want you to shout it. I want you to believe it. I want you to clap your hands and give God praise and give God glory in the name of the Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. God's chosen leader. God prescribed every single detail of your body. Dr. Tolliver, uh, Mother Tolliver, he deliberately chose your race, the color of your skin, your hair. I've always liked his hair, dude. We've always emulated uh, him and looked up to him. I see he's still got the old school socks. It's hard to find no socks, you know what I mean? Uh, but I I've always liked that part. Uh, in his hair. He's always represented excellence. He's always taught us protégés. I, I know that uh, uh, Dr. Thomas and all the leaders would call him when it was coming to teaching the preachers. Nobody could teach the preachers like Dr. Tolliver. Come on, somebody give the Lord praise and somebody give the Lord glory in the name of Jesus. Your hair and every feature about you, he custom made your body uh, the way he wanted it. 
He also determined the natural talents that you would possess and the uniqueness of your personality. Listen to what the Bible says. The Bible says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I sanctified you. Listen to this. And ordained you a prophet unto the nations. In Jeremiah chapter 1, verse number 5. In other words, God said, I had an ordination service. Before the sperm even hit the egg, I knew that in the distant past, that you would be the leader of progressive church of God in Christ. How many know that God makes no accidents? You know what I've learned? That when you learn servanthood and you learn how to serve, that God will open up doors. Matter of fact, God will do some things in your life that will blow your mind. It's called Ephesians chapter 3 and verse number 20. Preachers, can y'all pray for me? I I'm almost finished. And, and Ephesians 3 and verse number 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or expect or even imagine. But this is the key according to the power that worketh within you. Now, I know we're not looking at each other, but look towards heaven and say, don't get mad at me if I'm expecting something bigger than what you're expecting. God can only do what you believe he can do. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord praise and give the Lord glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalms 139 and verse number 14, uh, the word of the Lord reads, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, that my soul knoweth right well. So listen, that sickness that you went through, uh, man and woman of God, the trauma uh, that you went through, somebody say it was all part of the plan. Some of you have been through some trauma. Some of you have been through some pain. Some of you have been through some divorce. Some of you have been through hell and high water. But what I've learned, don't ever let the devil uh, play tricks with you. Somebody say, I'm covered in the blood. Is there anybody that still believes in the blood? I don't care if you make a mistake. How I many know if you repent, God will turn your mistake even unto a miracle. Somebody say, miracles are already in the room. So God wept. That it hurts you, man and woman of God, but it was allowed to shape your heart so that his likeness would grow and you would be an example. And you have been a five-star example. As a man and woman of God, they've ne never complaining, never negative. I don't care what's going on in their life. They look like royalty. They look like God, men and women. Somebody clap your hands and give the Lord praise and glory. In Romans chapter 8 and verse number 28, the Bible uh, reminds us, and we know, somebody say we know, we know, that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. Man of God, not only have you been called, a woman of God, not only have you been called, but everybody, and I want to say this, anybody that's a blessing to this man and woman of God in your time, talents, and treasure, you can never go wrong. Somebody say, this is good soil. Ah, this is miracle soil. Somebody say, miracle soil. Say, this is a place of honor. You believe it, say amen. amen. All right, let me give you uh, five facts concerning God's chosen leader. Number one, God's chosen leader, they are not driven by materialism. Now, now let me state this. We're certainly not poverty-stricken uh, people. We certainly don't believe in poverty. When you hear somebody say, well, I don't need no money, they ain't never had no money. <laughs> Because if you ever had money to pay your bills, believe me, it's better to have money than to not have money. Uh, sometimes I've heard preachers preach, oh, 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 money, no, it's the love of money. Money can do some good things. And matter of fact, God is releasing more money to progressive church of God in Christ and to people that are in this house, right? Some of y'all, y'all looked at me a little crazy, but I'm going to say it again. I prophesy more money's coming your way so you can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. But God chosen leaders, they're not driven by materialism. Their desire to acquire uh, becomes the whole goal of their lives. The drive uh, to always want more is based upon the misconception that having more will make me more happy, more important, and more secure. 
But all three ideas are untrue. I've discovered something that possessions only provide temporary happiness. But things do uh, not change. We eventually become bored. And, and what happens? Uh, we need, we want bigger things. Uh, we want, uh, uh, the, the car gets old. The house gets old. The furniture gets old. And we're still not satisfied. You know why? Because the only person that can satisfy you is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody say, your relationship with God is very important. And I've also learned that wealth can be lost instantly through a variety of uncontrolled factors. Somebody say real security is when you got Jesus on the inside. See, I was around them, them sanctified grandmas. Uh, I, I was watching uh, the man of God and I was trying to see how he was going to handle uh, a missionary Anderson because I know she'd been around and I'm like, I'm going to see how he going to pull this coat. I, I see the organist. He, he was very smooth. Uh, but how many know uh, when you've been through hell and high water and how many know that you went, you've been raised in the church? Some of you here at Progressive, you know you didn't always have the jobs that you had. You know that you have not always been where you've been. But thank God that there was an anointed man of God that taught you the laws of God that taught you the statues of God that taught you the precepts of God we've got a man of God that don't just have charisma but he preaches sound doctrine somebody say sound doctrine where a lot of apostasy is going on today you believe it say amen, amen. only what you do for Christ is going to last number two God's chosen leader is always concerned about souls. Hallelujah. I don't know how anybody can walk past folk and not even say Jesus. Oh, one day I was at the county jail. I was uh, getting ready to witness and they wouldn't let me in. And I got a little frustrated and the Holy Ghost said, no, you just turned this into a soul winning session. And so what happened is the attorneys begin to go through and people begin to come through and I say, Jesus, Lord, and I see people hurt. And then I start leading folks to Christ. Very quickly, a sheriff came out and said, oh, you can come in very quickly. How many know that when you start winning souls for the Lord Jesus Christ? And then as I begin to go through the elevator, I begin to pray for everybody. I said, this is going to be a good good day. I thank God for miracles that's going to take place. See, when you have a heart for souls, you're concerned about humanity. People make mistakes. People fall. People do stupid stuff. But I thank God for the church. Somebody clap your hand. I thank God for the church. I will never talk against the church because there's too much good in the church. The church have taught me how to forgive. The church has taught me how to love my wife. The church have taught me how to have victory over the boy inside. And thank God for men of God and women of God that believe in the institution of the church. There's some things uh, uh, that even uh, our sheriffs and we pray for homeland security. We pray for what's going on. But there's some things that only the church can solve through an anointed word of God. There's been times I've came into the church and I've heard just one anointed word from God and, and a supernatural strength came upon me. Don't let nobody trick you. Don't let nobody dupe you. Don't let anybody fool you. God, his hand is still on the church. God is still working miracles in the church. I believe like the old timers used to teach us. If you can have it, God can heal it. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what your case is. Get to the church. If you got to take a lift, if you got to take an Uber, if you got to catch a ride, step in where the presence of God is. And can I submit to you, the presence of the Lord is that progressive church of God in Christ. Now somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory. Take your seat for a minute. Number three, number three, God's chosen leaders. They always want to see God's people walk in victory. 
They don't want you to see your head down. We're not victims, but we're victors. I was taught by the old timers. I don't care if all hell is breaking loose in your life. Turn your praise up. I was taught by the old timers. The more God bless you, turn your praise up. Matter of fact, we were praising God so much that a prophet could step in the room and couldn't read us by our body language, couldn't know what season we were going in because we would lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubting. We had so much praise down on the inside. Don't let the devil invade your praise. All you've been through, somebody say, I got a right to praise the Lord. Why don't you just take a praise break for a minute and think over your life, what God has done, how he's brought you out. Clap your hands, give God praise. All right. Somebody say glory to God. Because Jesus gives you victory. That's why I choir, whatever you do, don't stop singing about Jesus. I was just, I had the mask on and I was looking Dr. Tolliver and I'm like, that is the way a choir is supposed to sound. I, I started on this end and I went down to that end. I'm like, look at the joy. I mean, the brothers, they were just rocking. The sisters were singing like it was their last time. And then I thought about it. That's the way they taught us that when you come in the house of God, I don't care if you're sick. I don't care if you got a thorn in your flesh. Always give God your best. God wants your best praise. God wants your best fruit. Somebody give Give God the fruit of your lips and say, God is great and greatly to be praised. Somebody say glory to God. And so listen to this. I got to wrap this up. It, 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 if the devil, <laughs> he said, take your time. I got to bring it in. <laughs> if the devil can't distract you, he will try to discourage you. And I don't have to take a poll. But if you're going to lead God's people, you're going to go through some hell and high water. When you lead God's people, you're going to go through some challenges. And that's why I challenge you men and women of God. Sometimes just walk up to the man of God and just bless him just because. See, my grandparents, they weren't wealthy people. But they used to have they used to raise hogs and pigs and I couldn't understand that every time they would kill a hog they always went to the butcher shop you remember that white butcher you know they didn't have the vacuum that during that time that white paper and they would make sure that the preacher he had the same thing that they were butchering so I grew up with grandparents that knew how to honor the man and woman of God. You remember those shoes? I believe it was John F. Kennedy called the wingtips. I'm not talking about the new ones. I'm talking about the old school ones. And they would have them big heels. My grandfather, he would when he bought a blue pair, he bought the preacher a blue pair. When he bought a black pair, he bought the preacher a black pair. When he brought a brown pair, he brought the preacher a brown pair. You say, what does that got to do with today? They were teaching us the seed of honor. When you really love somebody, somebody say, talk is cheap. You may not have no money, but you can come to the custodians. You can come to the deacons and say, how can I vacuum the church? I'm not looking for no money, but I want to put my faith around my seed. Call time and I guarantee you God will bless you. It's time in this post 9-11 age. It's time in this pandemic. Don't let nobody talk against the men and women of God. Don't let nobody 
come against the men and women of God. We've got to support one another. we got to love one another. Our styles may be different. We may preach different. We may sing different. We may dance different. But the Holy Ghost is wrapped up in the righteousness of the Lord Jesus. And if you're lifting up Jesus, somebody say, Jesus is a miracle worker. Jesus is a deliverer. Jesus, I save your family. He will put your marriage back together. Somebody praise him. Somebody glorify him. Hallelujah. All right, take your seat one more time. I'm almost finished, but I feel good. Deacon Murray, I feel good. God is strengthening me under this a pulpit. I feel a miracle in this pulpit. Somebody say you at the right place at the right time because God is releasing a miracle your way. Now the fifth thing about God's chosen leader, they got praise in their spirit. If you want to build up the man of God, if you want to build up the woman of God, what has made progressive, listen to this, one of the secrets, rather, to progressive is this. Most folks won't tell you, but I'm going to tell you. One of the secrets is you understand the, the weapon of praise and worship. Every time I have walked in here, I don't care if I was in the back. I don't care if I was in the front. Man, when I begin to hear the musicians, I mean, it, it amazes me because, see, the, the, the musicians at Progressive, they don't warm up. They come out swinging. <laughs> they like the SWAT team. They come out waiting for business. And then the men's choir on the other day, ah, God, I'm like, these men singing like this. All these young brothers have no, they getting ready to get saved. They getting ready to get delivered. They don't know where they, and then to hear this choir, I, I'm going somewhere. When you come into the house of God, make sure whatever you do, we all have problems. We all have challenges. We all go through storms of life. But this man and woman of God has taught us, pastors, you got to get this. I can handle anything as long as praise and worship is where it's supposed to be. All hell can be breaking loose, but no sh nobody should be able to walk in the church and even have a clue what's going on because they're singing like they're in heaven. They're playing like they're in heaven. They're clapping their hands like they're in heaven. See, your leader understands Psalms 34 the psalmist says I will bless the Lord at all times the good times the bad times and there's some mean times where you feel like quitting you feel like throwing in the towel but praise won't let you quit praise won't let you throw in the towel somebody say I'm anointed with a kingly anointed I'm anointed for the task and I can't leave here and the God says and man of God I stopped by early this morning to encourage you mama I came to encourage you we came to encourage you that God is not finished with you yet. You cannot die until it's time to go. He prays in your heart. He prays in your spirit. You believe it? Say amen. That's why, that's why St. Paul, he's in prison. In Philippians chapter 4, in verse number 4, he says something incredibly interesting. He says, rejoice in the Lord. All hell is breaking loose 
in your business all hell is breaking loose in your body but he says rejoice see a God chosen leader rejoices I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord which made heaven and earth he will not suffer thee to move somebody say God is a present help in the time of trouble can for the next 60 seconds stand on your feet because as you praise God God is strengthening God's leader the Bible says in Proverbs praise ye the Lord praise God in his sanctuary praise him in the permanent of his power come on put your hands together and praise him listen I, I really mean it but, but my last one I gotta share this and then we gotta come on come on come on come on you gotta choose to conquer you gotta make up in your mind take your seat just for me we, we almost finished you gotta make up in your mind I'm not losing I tell folks all the time don't count me out unless you know I'm really dead <laughs> somebody say I am not dead yet I'm yet breathing you have got to make a decision I am winning I'm not talking to losers in here I'm talking to winners in here 
You may feel like you're losing, but we don't walk by feelings. We walk by faith. We walk by revelation of the word of God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Stop walking by your situation. Stop walking about your circumstances and start walking by revelation of the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I want to let you know faith is in the room. Somebody say faith is in the room. That's why the apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 8, who shall separate you? I got to ask this question. Well, they don't like me. Come on, you got to grow up. This is a mature church. You don't know what they're going through. Maybe they got some family problems. Maybe they got some internal conflict going on. Nobody is not stutting in you. We all got our problems. We all got our challenges. We got to have some grace and we got to have some mercy. Your mindset got to be, when I come to the house of God, I, I was so excited about coming to the house of God. I told the driver, I said, slow down now. We got to slow down the weather. It's really bad because I said, we got to be on time too. They one of them churches that's punctual. They start on time. I like, I, I like folks that mean what they, and I said, he began to drive. He said, we're going to be all right. And everything was just a smooth drive. And then when we made it to Meadowview, I said, oh, I came with expectation. I, I promise, I promise choir I'm closing, but I'm coming with expectation. Is there anybody in here? that's got expectation that God is not finished with progressive quite yet because there's a great anointing Dr. Kathy I was in I was in Atlanta I had never been to the leadership and I was with one of the bishops that was a friend of mine that's in the church of God in Christ younger bishop and 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 Dr. Tolliver I didn't see his adjutant at this time and he's at the line here and uh He's from California. You know, I'm always going to look out for California brothers. Everybody, but you know. And, and, and I'm looking, and, and, and he's just waiting, and bishops are going right there. And I went to the lady, and I said, hey, he is a bishop. He'd been around here long, and all these people. I didn't know who I was talking to, you know. <laughs> bishop Macklin's uh, uh, family member. It's oh, yeah. Man, they moved him over real quick, gave him favor and get him on in there. I said, I'll get your books. Look at your neighbor and say, hey, we never forget these generals. They paved the tears. They were on their knees praying for our families. He made it through the Jim Crow laws where major racism. We don't know no racism, but he was better and not bitter. I was on it with that man. I said, no, whatever you need. While I'm here, I'll help you. And I want to let you know that God, man of God, stand on your feet. Come on, some men that's around him. I want you to put your hands around him. Come on, come on. And say, we stand with you. Not with talk, but with action. And with our money. Now every one of y'all, come on. I know we can't do the seat. Mother, stand on your feet. I know. Where's the daughter at? I thought I said, come on. Just touch her. We stand. We stand. This is not just a regular first lady. They have paid. They have served. Not for one year, two years, ten years. They have given their life. We cannot forget our seniors. We cannot forget our fathers and mothers in the vineyard. Now, I you may be seated now, mamas. But this is what we're doing. We're going to finish. Give me one of them Holy Ghost praise and worship song that's getting ready to strengthen. Her. Come on, y'all sing. Somebody, come on, sing. Grab that. Gee, he, he's all right. Come on, something like that. Come on. Come on, sister.
put those blessed hands together. See, your hand clap is a weapon. A weapon that says, I will win. A weapon that says, I got strength. A weapon that says, I will succeed. Woo! The Holy Ghost is in this place. Woo! you play it. Woo! That's it. People come to church to be healed. People come to church to be delivered. People come to church to be uplifted. Depression is left. Oppression, suppression. Be healed. Be delivered. Be set free. Somebody shout glory to God. Somebody shout praises to Jesus. Somebody say God's already worked it out. Now clap your hands and give him an advance praise. In the name of the Lord. I, I want to do this prayer. I want to do this prayer. And I, I want to say this. Those that are listening by television. And maybe you want to sow a seed. This is good ground. And I know just about every pastor in this city, and we got some great leaders, and I honor all of them. But I have to say this, this is a father, and there's very few fathers left in Zion. A lot of times we don't appreciate them until they leave. And, and we want to appreciate them while they are alive. And progressive, I want to thank God for all of you preachers that I see, pastors in the audience, I honor all of you. I believe we have to learn how to celebrate one another. But I, I sent, God gave me a word of knowledge and to say this. I don't know who it is, maybe somebody on television. Something may have happened in the distant past. Make it right. You have a man of God, if you humble yourself and you come to him, he'll forgive you. He won't hold grudges. He's a real man of God. And, and God, God shared this with me. He says that it's the trick of the enemy to try to divide us leaders. You know, sometimes you don't really understand that until you begin to grow in the Holy Ghost. You begin to grow in the Spirit. You don't really begin to see. And God says, I don't want anything to block your miracle or hinder you. So, it, it, listen, maybe there's misunderstanding. A lot of times situations can be solved with one meaningful conversation. But usually you have a, a Haman that's always trying to fight it. Don't want reconciliation. Don't want healing. I don't know who that is, but let me say this. You have a leader that loves you. Go to him. Go to him. Talk to him. Ask for forgiveness. Do you know what I found out? So good sitting my mother right there. I don't know who she was. I'm like, they got me sitting behind a mother. I'm going to be all right. And a prayer warrior. Make it right while you're alive. Do you know that the Christian army is the only army that shoots its wounded? And God says it's time for us to humble ourselves. If you have to humble your, you know what? I'm not going to let nothing stop me from any relationship. I'll humble myself even if the other person won't humble themselves. Why? Because I need his anointing. Why? Because I need his grace. And we need each other. I want everybody to extend your hands. Father, we pray a prophetic anointing upon this house that has already been decreed and declared years ago. But you said in your word in Isaiah 49, in verse number 25 you would contend with those that contend with us and you would save our families you said in Isaiah 54 17 no weapon somebody say no weapon that's formed against this ministry that's formed against this man and woman of God that's formed against us somebody say every strategy every scheme has already backfired Come on, somebody say, I'm covered in the blood. All that I have and all that I possess. Now give God your best praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on.